alive and, and running, uh, folks. Uh, and uh, Michael was going to do a little heavy lifting while we were doing our other committees. And so we may as well um, start wherever you want to start, Michael, with changes. Well, I think, um, hold on a second. Let me grab uh, the relevant document. Um, the main change is going to be the report. So um, way at the end? No, it's not at the end. It's uh, at page um, page 18. Yep. Um, and so I added into that section five, uh, the report requirement under subsection C that the Secretary of Ag beginning on July 1, 2020 and ending on January 1, 2021 shall report to your committees um, on the first day of each month regarding the status of the assistance programs established under section one and three. And then the report shall include the number of applicants for assistance in each month uh, and overall and the amount of grant funds awarded under each program. So that's the main change. The other change that was significant um, was back uh, on page 16 line 14 and then again uh, in section one where it says in the event that the U.S. Department of the Treasury determines that an expenditure of funds made available from the CARES Act was not necessary or otherwise impermissible under the CARES Act, the AG and the secretary, let's just say the secretary of agriculture, shall hold harmless any grant recipient that accepted grant funds in good faith reliance on the state concerning the eligible applicant's eligibility for or use of the grant award. And so that same change was made um, on page nine. Line 17. Um, and then that page nine, line 17, Michael. Yes, subdivision five. <laughs> Yeah. Any questions about any of these changes, uh, folks? Speak up. Where, where did that change come from? It, it, I, I think you're saying if we've screwed up, the state will just pay for it. Yes. And that was uh, language that was included in the economic development bill that, that the Senate looked at either today uh, yeah, or presented through today. Okay. Thank yeah. you. And uh, Senator Starr requested that it be added in earlier today yeah so unless somebody fraudulently right. uh, yeah. tries to get it they're mm -hmm. they're not on the hook for it correct yeah uh, were there any others michael yes and so uh in the eligibility requirements on page four and again in uh section three page four line seven you wanted to open up the period for uh, a person to demonstrate economic harm. And you move that from March, from September um, to December 1st. And so that was, that change was made. Um, but that does raise a question in the appropriations section. Um, and let me take you to that question. It's on page uh, 
on page 10. Uh, in that sub B, it says any funds appropriated that are not expended by November 1st shall revert to the agency. Um, and for those who can demonstrate economic hard, harm incurred from March 1, 2020 through December 1st, 2020. So, um, so the December 1st, 2020 date is now consistent with what you just changed in the eligibility requirements. But if everything reverts on November 1st, how are they going to provide assistance for anyone that shows economic harm between November 1 and December 1? What, what about if we said just October 15th? For what? The end date of the economic harm window. Well, we'd have to move it the other way, wouldn't we, Chris? Well, I, I think, I think my my point is, um, right. So maybe this language really needs to be clarified a little bit, uh, because it reverts to the agency for for further expenditure under the programs. Um, and maybe it's not a problem, but maybe it just could be clarified further. Um, well, we're again, Senator Hardy was asking, what's our goal? Our, our goal was to try to make sure we're only giving it to people who are not uh, profitable in the COVID pandemic, right? Right. So here, here, maybe I can be more clear. I think um, on line 11, instead of it saying for ongoing financial assistance, I think you just should say for reallocation for fi financial assistance under the programs under section one and three, right? Because now you're clear clarifying that you're going to take this money back and then you're going to reallocate. Right now, the way that it reads November 1st for ongoing financial, I think you could read that as everything stops on November 1st. So I, I would just want to change that word ongoing to for reallocation of yeah. financial assistance. Well, I think that was our intention was if there was money, get it to the people that it should be going to. And then if there's money left it way at the end, it reverts back to the UI fund. Right. And that, that now I think you kind of have a logical and, and kind of plain language. The money gets appropriated. If it's not spent by November 1st, it reverts to the agency for reallocation. If they have economic harm through December 1st, they can collect it up to December 20th. And at that point, it reverts to UI. Yeah. Ruth, did you have a question? Um, well, I think that Michael's suggestion takes care of it. But I yeah. do want to have a, I do have a sort of follow up question, Michael, to my question this morning about economic harm. Um, and, you know, specifically when it comes to the dairy processors, um, I know, for example, DFA is charging pretty high, quote unquote, COVID charges on their milk checks, which no. is. They yeah. wouldn't do anything like that. I know. And I've heard from a bunch of farmers. I don't know if Agrimark is doing the same, but I know DFA is doing it. And so if that, I mean, that's extra revenue that DFA is getting, isn't it? Or I, I, I mean, just concerned that they're going to be able to show economic harm, even though they're literally taking money from farmers at this point. Um, and I, I want to uh, prevent that. <laughs> Do you know what uh, I mean? I do. But is, <laughs> D, is DFA going to be applying as a dairy processor? I don't think DFA is a licensed dairy processor in the state. Oh. Uh, well, I I I don't know. Michael. They may own. They may own. <laughs> Processor. They process milk in the way up in St. Albans. Right. So they, they own the St. Albans Creamery, but I don't, 
but that's going to be a separate corporate entity. Yeah. Um, well, I would think they'd be going after the big, the big fish uh, through economic development, if at all possible. So. But we aren't going to be able to make this bulletproof. I know. I know. I just, want, I just want to make sure that they are, you know, I'm just annoyed that they are doing that to farmers and then I don't want them to qualify for our program if that's what they're doing. Well, I could, well, that is what they're doing. I, I could see the rate going up, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't know, eight. I don't know what, I'm not sure what it is, like eight and a half cents a, a hundred weight or 10 cents a hundred weight, but they could raise it to 15 or 20 if they see the farmers getting uh, you know, some money. We think or, they're, they're eligible for the 60 grand as a large processor? Well, we think so, we're not sure. They might be. They yeah. might be. They'll try to be, <laughs> it's more likely. Yeah, they're gonna get any, penny they can get. They'll go from ACCD and here. Because, uh, you know, but the farmers supposedly own the co-op and if it doesn't make money, they have to put money in to make it uh, stay alive. So, I, you know, I don't know if there's, there's a fix to it, but it's not in this bill. Yeah, it's a brutal system. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Okay. Um, there was, huh. uh, on page four, line 20, I replaced the term expenses with economic harm. So it says economic harm is not compensable under this section if the same economic harm has been or will be covered by insurance or another state or federal grant. Um, so I just want to, it had previously said expenses and it, expenses didn't encompass all of economic harm. Yeah. And I think that's really the only changes. <laughs> Any, any, uh, anyone else pick up on anything we talked about this morning that Michael may have missed? Uh, in, uh, I forgot to say that I took out the appropriation to the agency or the language that could have appropriated money to the agency to do education and outreach. That was in section five. Yeah. What, Michael, what did we land on for the date question uh, for non-dairy? Did we resolve that? You mean the net profit? Yeah. Date? Yep. You told me to leave that alone. Okay. Um, uh, it was August 1st. Right, it was August 1st. Uh, Brian. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, Michael, the only appropriations in the bill now are dairy farmers, dairy processors, non-dairy farmers and processors, and the VHCB. Is that right? That's correct. Thank you. The spreadsheet's pretty accurate right now. And yeah. you, I, on page 14, you did change the grant amounts too. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's what's not accurate about the spreadsheet right now. Uh, I thought I changed the spreadsheet. Yeah, the spreadsheet's accurate. Uh, it's here. at least the one that I have. I didn't know that you had updated it. So the one I I'm have. I'm looking at committee discussion. Pardon? On the spreadsheet, there's one that says committee discussion at the bottom. Right, that's the one I changed. I can change committee final also. How about you just name As long it? as it's in this bill, it's fine. Right. That's a good point. We're not passing right. the spreadsheet. 
Right. So the amounts are 2,500, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000. Right. Yeah. That's what I got. And I haven't got the spreadsheet. Um, anything, any other questions, concerns, uh, any of that? So I, I guess I do have a question, Michael, where we I forget where the language is, but where it says um, basically these could work in tandem with other federal or state grants or your insurance, but all together you can't blow through, you know, you can't double count losses. Does that, um, does that mean that they would be, that the businesses would be eligible to go through the same program that we passed this morning through ACCD's kind of business program? Um, yes. Um, so for example, on page 13, line six, it says economic harm is not compensable under this section. If the same economic harm, I uh, should say economic harm has been, or will be covered by insurance or another federal grant. So what about another state grant? Um, you could put that in there if you would like. Well, I think it's a well, question. I mean, if 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 a big outfit had two hundred thousand dollars in losses, uh, they could do hours or do the other one and then come back with a different set of bills and and harm, they can't use the same harm right. false program. They've got to have a different set of uh, numbers and, and a different level of harm, or not a different level, but this, they aren't going to be able to use the same harm for two programs. No, but, right. but if they are eligible under the ACCD, like every other Vermont business, and then they're eligible under this because they happen to be in the ag sector. I don't know. Well, they'd be able to get funding up to their total loss. So if they've lost, uh, if they lost two hundred thousand dollars. They got sixty thousand dollars out of hundred thousand dollars out of this program. They could go look for another hundred thousand dollars in another program. They so they could continue to try to re get re awards of grants until they reach their total loss i appreciate that I'm not saying that's good or bad i'm saying that's that's what that's that seems like what sure. they could do but uh but a restaurant for instance i think the working assumption was the total the max grant would be in the neighborhood of 60 grand right and they, we didn't have that in the bill ultimately but it gives you some context so uh, you know i i don't i don't want to fight about it it's not that big a deal but it is a little strange it seems to me well, I'm not saying you're, I'm not opposed to what you're saying, what you're implying anyway. But I, I will say that other, especially in the house, that there are programs that will be available to, to multiple programs that will be available to the same business. For instance, House Natural is talking about a program to give assistance to outdoor recreation businesses, but those same businesses would, would be eligible underneath the, the economic development assistance program. So the ACCD program as well. Um, and so they, they have multiple opportunities or potentially those outdoor recreation businesses will have multiple opportunities. I, the only thing I really want to make sure of is we don't, and we've done it is I don't want the same bills being used to be able to collect off from yeah. is that yeah. that's really fraud uh, in my book and yeah I think Michael that you should um on line seven should, will have not been or will not be covered by insurance or another state or federal grant yeah yeah but I actually do have that for the other program so yeah they should they should be consistent yeah and you're yeah and you're going to make it harm throughout? So. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Anything else, guys? 
And you wrote your gal. <laughs> that's okay. Guys, it's more sort of gender. gender. Yeah, well, you all just use y'all. Y'all right? is good. Um, I'd get arrested for sure then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my, my biggest concern right now is making sure we can move this fast. I mean, we spent a lot of time on it and I just wanna make sure we can move it as fast as possible. So what, anything we can do with our friends in the house and the rest yeah. of the Senate to just get this through so that we can get these checks out, um, that would be helpful. Um, it, better, it better be able to send checks a week after next because I've told them a lot of farmers that it should be happening. Yeah, I think that's that's going to be tight. But but yes, I think we have to in the next few weeks. I just have gotten so many desperate calls and wanted oh. to say, the check is in the mail. So in that regard, Senator Hardy, I did spend a little time in GovOps today um, with the three members who are not members of this committee um, asking if anybody had questions. And they actually did. And Anthony can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we've got three votes there and probably no questions. And I have an email from Senator Brock, who's concerned about it not being the 50 million. And I'll, I'll call him when we're done here and explain what happened there. So I can, I can pretty much see that we're going to be uh, greasing up pretty well here on the, on the floor on Thursday. Well, the, the, the main thing is, Approps does it need to be referred to approps and yeah, if so, no. we, should, we should move tomorrow that pending entrance in the notice it be referred blah blah blah. I you you, you got to get a rule suspension first. Yeah, that won't be a problem. And okay. Jane Jane may not even take the bill in like like today. She said, you know how. Um, Suspended the rules and not asked to have it go to. To uh, I think we'll look at this tomorrow in in ag. Uh, so maybe Thursday it won't even have to go. Have to go to probes. I'll I'll chat with Jane about that. Yeah, I think she thinks as long as she's aware of it and knows what the number is at the top end that she's probably going to be comfortable with it. Yeah, do your we, magic, Bobby. She's the one that gave me the number. <laughs> right. But it, it, is, it is not a bill yet. It's just being introduced. So that usually slows us down by a day. So oh, we just. Ryan didn't have a bill, did he? Uh, uh, Michael in, in government ops. Yeah, there was S350, I think. When will this get assigned a number, uh, Michael? Tomorrow. Oh, okay. So Thursday it'll have a number. Okay, oh. somebody want to move the bill? Uh, the I'll move it. Oh, go ahead, Ruth. <laughs> uh, I uh, move the bill. <laughs> 6.2, 6 Michael? 6.1. Yes. Oh, no, two, you're 6. right. There'll be corrections. Yeah. Yep. So it's been moved by Ruth, seconded by Brian. Yep. Um, okay. Shall I call the roll? <laughs> is there further any further discussion uh you want to call the roll ruth yes senator hardy yes oh wait sorry senator collimore yes senator hardy yes oh you guys are hard senator pearson yes senator polina yes senator star yes and um there's probably um Several that would like to report the bill. Um, I thought maybe uh, Chris and I would would do this one, and um, and then I'd have you other three uh, do six fifty two. I think it is six fifty six, which is a multi page uh, multi page bill, and it would break that up with three of you doing it and. And I thought, Chris, I would, if you don't mind, I mean, I'll do any part of it that you don't want to do, but I thought I'd do the dairy stuff and and not through, maybe we can talk about what section that ends in, and then you could pick up the, you know, the off dairy stuff. I can do that in the BHCB, that's fine, and, and the reports and stuff. 
So you've got and, the bulk of the money and I'll, I'll get the rest at the point. Um, so is there anything else that any of you would like to bring up and talk about, uh, Ruth? Well, I just wanted to um, mention that we have that other bill, the livestock um, shelter bill. bill. <laughs> and yeah, the, the last bill. And I think that I... I think Senator Sears is taking that up tomorrow in judiciary in the morning. Yeah, that's right. And then and Senator you can't be there, right? I can't be there and I can't be at our meeting. If we're meeting tomorrow, I don't know if we are, but I couldn't do it until later in the morning. Well, I was planning on because we gotta we gotta rock and roll on. Well, I wanted to get your uh, 254 done you know talk about that and and we got to talk campion the hell out of offering that that amendment of his it it you know it, it doesn't really it's a study fall. bobby did you look it's a study well yeah, yeah. We, well we you guys can, it, but. you guys can definitely meet without me i trust you i i don't want to hold everything up we have so much to do i don't want to hold everything up but tomorrow is my son's eighth grade graduation well i, I guess we ought, we ought to all be coming down to go to it <laughs> <laughs> it's drive through we have to do it from the car but it's still he's excited about it so well, no, we gotta I, get creamies afterwards <laughs> Are they so that's in the morning? It's in the morning. So I, I think I should be able to be, I can join you guys probably around 11. Um, well, don't, certainly don't hurry back to be with us when you could be with him. Um, and um, so we'll, we'll just tinker with, um, well, we may talk some politics on this bill, uh, but um, we'll look over the study that, Brian has, and um, and then we'll go to work on six five six. Yeah. Okay. And then, okay. Michael, do I need to do something with this bill to since I'm the clerk to get it to the secretary? Will you send me a clean draft to send to Bloomer? Uh, yeah. Normally, committee bills are delivered to legislative council drafting ops to get well, the bill uh, number okay. we'll hand it to you michael then will you take care of it yeah but you also need a message to our drafting ops from your rules committee that it's okay for them to process it i've got to hop off bobby you're going to take care of all that for us right nah to hell with that just put it in michael <laughs> okay <laughs> no, i'll call peter <laughs> right. i'll call <laughs> peter right away Okay, that's that's all we need is an email from Peter or Tim or whomever to say it's been approved. Yeah, and uh, so you've got the committee vote and all that. Yeah, and five zero zero. Yeah. Okay, folks. Right. Um, Thanks, guys. Good work. I'll see you soon. And. Uh,